Namaste. We are working on double pigeon pose today. So in working in the direction of double pigeon pose, what we're going to need today is your blocks and your blanket. Now, what you'll also maybe need is even a pillow or something that's a little more comfortable to support your seat. So we wanna lift our seat up, especially if our knees are pretty high today. Also consider using a chair for this pose as sometimes in this pose, you might feel very open in the hips and you're also gonna feel a lot of strengthening through the lower back because everything is connected in our beautiful bodies. We're really working through the psoas muscle, which does wrap through itself here or wrap forward and around to the leg muscles. So you're gonna feel a sensation of a pull. You'll also feel it if you're working through sciatica like I have. And so I tend to find myself some days, my knee is a little higher than others, using a block or a blanket underneath. And I'm gonna show you that now. So let's come into our double pigeon by first beginning with taking the left foot parallel to the front edge of your mat. Now you're gonna bring the right foot on top and you're going to cross so that the shins are both parallel to the front edge of your mat. Ultimately, the knee are gonna be pressing down together here. To show you the demonstration, I do feel the sensation through my right side. So to modify for this particular pose, what we're going to do is enable ourselves to really relax at first, keeping the hips pressing down into support of whatever you're sitting on, whether it's the ground, the earth, the mat, if it's even a chair, you're gonna lengthen up through the torso and roll the shoulders back. So really maintaining yourself in a proper posture. Remember to keep the ears over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips. Your hands can be down on the ground and you're just working on breathing to sustain yourself in the pose. In yin yoga, we hold this pose for five minutes on either side. So it's important to find endurance through breath in this particular pose, that it is, it is a master pose. As we're coming into this particular space, here are some ways that we can adapt it. Continue breathing. I like to use a block and place the block in between my knee and ankle, and this gives me a lot of space to relax into this pose. The other option, if you want something a little more comfortable, if say that particular block, you say you have maybe a cork block, then use those foamy blocks instead. You can also use a nice comfortable blanket, which I adore. It makes the pose much more accessible, much more comfortable, doesn't have any awkward shapes under the leg, so it gives you a lot more freedom to release yourself. Now, if you feel comfortable here, we will work on placing the forearms on the shin and maybe starting to lean forward. Resist the urge to round through the upper body or through the upper back, known as the thoracic spine. You wanna keep the spine nice and long as you're coming forward. You're working through the abdominal muscles here to draw the belly button in and ground into the pelvic floor as you draw the crown of your head forward more. This will be a sweet spot to add the blocks. So if you'd like, you can take your blocks, place those bad boys in front of you at any height that you want. I kind of like to start at the very tallest and then I start to walk my way forward until I feel a sense of con connectivity and then I can rest. You'll know where your edge is at and then when you're done, we're gonna come out of the pose. Remember to do the same on the other side. Again, you have the option to do this on your back if you prefer. So if this is not an option for you today, neither was our uh, half pigeon that we did, so this would be the full variation, then let's go ahead and see what it's like to do it on our backs, shall we? So we'll come down and when we come down, you're gonna cross the left leg over the right, or let's try it this way. Let's do the right over the left and, the right, and then the left under. And just know what that feels like here. We did this side seated, right? Now let's change the position to see what the difference is. You wanna keep your back placed firmly down in the mat. Now, let's begin. The right foot on the ground, left foot crosses in half pigeon to start. In this space, you will begin to bring your right knee in and maybe reach in the direction of the shin first. 
holding that shin in and modify here, you're receiving the same benefit through the left as you would receive in the right if you were in the full double pigeon pose. If you want more, then you can cross and reach for the outside edge of that right foot and start to work towards drawing yourself together. You'll also feel the same sensation here. And I'll hold from my inner uh, calf so you can see. Even my feet and knee are still apart. Naturally seated, it would be apart as well. Now from here, notice the belly draws in on the exhale. We'll release together and bring your feet down. Those that are in the seated variation will extend the legs out long. Those that were on their back will slowly rise up and extend your legs out long. And then we both will end up together in the same posture, Dandasana staff pose. I hope this helps you and alleviates any troubles that you may be having in the double pigeon pose. Know that it's always okay to modify and adapt as much as you need to for the sake of your own wellness and well-being of your body. Please comment, email, suggest, and let me know any other things that I can do as we journey together and discover our bodies. Namaste.